quick uh, recap from uh, last week. Uh, really appreciated the way the guys uh, fought and battled uh, and uh, played really well in the fourth quarter after having a lead and then losing the lead. Um, we finished the game exceptionally well, uh, both offensively and defensively, made a few plays and uh, allowed us to have the opportunity uh, late in the game to make a couple first downs to, to close it out. And uh, happy uh, about the win. Guys played really hard against a really good Texas Tech team. And hopefully we can carry that over uh, to a really good week this week because we have uh, our hands full with a really good TCU team that uh, I have so much respect for Coach Patterson and what he's done there and uh, excited about that challenge. And we have to have a great week of preparation to give ourselves an opportunity. It started with Kellis. Hey, Chris, how do you plan on handling quarterback reps in practice this week? Well, yesterday we didn't practice uh, Skyler. Um, he just took all the mental reps yesterday, and we practiced um, Will and Nick uh, were the main ones today. Our, our hope is that Skyler can take some of the reps uh, today. Um, we'll find out um, how much he can take. But we hope he can take a few and then obviously increase it more on Wednesday if he's available. And that's obviously going to be contingent upon what he can do today and tomorrow. Um, but we'll split those reps up. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, – uh, Will and Nick as well um, can take some snaps and, and be um, able to operate our system uh, in the in case Skyler after Tuesday or midway through Wednesday doesn't feel like he can go, but uh, we think he can. And um, if you could go back a few months for me with these next two questions, what is it that impressed you so much about Will Howard as a high school football player that made you think he had this kind of potential? Well, he was a winner for starters. Uh, won, uh, I think, the most games they'd won at his high school um, when he was there. At his senior year, had a great senior year, had a really good team. And um, just throughout the process, just getting to know him, Coach Klein getting to know him, myself, Coach Mess, um, just was the, the right fit for what we were doing offensively from a personality standpoint as well as from a skill set standpoint. And uh, obviously, we didn't have him much in the, in the summertime uh, or the spring. Uh, but uh, – did all the little things right to try to learn the offense and, and had a really good uh, fall camp. So we're excited about uh, his progress. And how did, can you tell me the story of how you found out about Deuce Vaughn and managed to go down there and recruit him to Kansas state when there's so many other schools around there? Well, he, we're always trying to, to find the best players and the best talent. And um, you know, we came across Deuce and, and we're able to bring him up on a visit. And his, his personality, as you guys have all learned, is so infectious. He's such a wonderful kid to be around with a smile on his face and always happy. And, and we just – we wanted that kind of energy and enthusiasm and, and – a love for the game of football in our program. And uh, I didn't care what his size was. He was dynamic on film. And um, I knew that that was a skill set that we lacked, that we needed to be able to try to um, recruit him and get him. And, and fortunately, we were able to do that. And um, can't say enough about the, the young man and his family because they're, they're very first-class, mature, great kid, great family. John? Yeah, Chris, after going through the film of what Will did in the game on Saturday, just what did you like the most and what needs to be cleaned up the most for him? Well, in the fact that he didn't take as many reps um, last week and then to come in and operate some things, I thought he operated really well. He had a couple of balls that he probably would like to have back that we could bring down a little bit that uh, uh, maybe some anxiety and nerves. But I think the the thing that tells you everything you need to know about what we felt of Will Howard was – I don't know, there's two and a half minutes left or so, three minutes, somewhere in there, and we have a third and, and four or five, and we could easily run the football uh, and say defense go win it, and we throw it, and Sebastian makes a nice play to create the first down, and then we have that situation again where it's third and four. They have no timeouts left. We get a first down. In essence, the game is over. Um, we can easily run the football and say defense um, go stop them. Uh, but we say, no, we're going to put it in your hands, Will. And uh, he made a nice check at the line of scrimmage. Um, Deuce got open and he delivered a strike. And that tells you all you need to know about the confidence that uh, uh, we as a coaching staff and, and uh, the players have in, in Will Howard. Yeah, how much of the playbook would you say is open to him when he's in there? Uh, it's all open, yeah. We won't, we won't change anything. Appreciate it. You bet. Derek. Yeah, Coach, I know that normally you'd probably like 
have the conversations later, but do you have to have conversations with those seniors about possibly taking that free year just because of the recruiting implications it could have? Yeah, we have not had those conversations as of right now. Um, I don't think it's fair to have those conversations right now just because you don't know whether it's COVID, whether it's an injury, whether it's a, a great season, whether it's not as good a season. I just think it's hard. I don't think it's fair to those guys. And all of a sudden, you ask a kid and he says, Coach, I'm moving on. And all of a sudden, he gets COVID next week and he's out for X amount of weeks. I just don't think that's very fair. So um, we have not had those conversations with any of the guys yet. And you gave an update on a lot of the guys yesterday that were dealing with some injuries. The one you didn't is Justin Gardner. What's it kind of look at like for him? He practiced yesterday, so we uh, and it was limited, but he practiced enough that we feel he'll be good to go. Thank you. It's, uh, yeah, Coach, uh, talking about the quarterbacks, we kind of forgot to mention the offensive line. How did you rate the offensive line coming out of that game? They played much better uh, than they did the week before. Uh, I thought we came off the ball exceptionally well. I thought we, we connected and, and ID'd people and got our double teams and got to the next level uh, really well. Uh, it just, I, just, I thought we played more physical. Um, our protection was much better. And it's going to be a work in progress. We've talked about that. When you have a bunch of guys that haven't played together, it's going to take some time to gel. Nobody wants to hear that. We don't want to hear it as coaches, uh, but that's the reality of the situation. So uh, I was very pleased. Coach Riley knows that they can continue to get better and play better, but we took some really positive steps. And you played some true freshmen that hadn't really played. How did you evaluate all of those true freshmen that were at Saw Action? Uh, really, they, I thought they did a really nice job. The stage wasn't too big for them. There's so many guys. It's easy to talk about Deuce and Will Howard, but there's so many other guys that, that played. T.J. Smith really jumped out at us as, as somebody that uh, uh, we think is going to have a really bright future. Uh, it played some, some safety for us. And there were some other guys as well. But uh, uh, Carver Willis played some left tackle in the Big 12 as a true freshman, and that's pretty cool um, to have a, a freshman playing left tackle. Uh, for you. So there's a number of guys. There's other ones that played as well. So we're excited about this class. Thank you. You bet. Arnie. Um, yeah, back to uh, to Will. I know uh, he had hoped to get the spring um, and have that opportunity. But do you think he still benefited from being there early the, no the amount of time he was and just being around guys getting acclimated a little bit? Without question, he, uh, he benefited from being here early as far as getting with Coach Dawson and the strength staff, uh, with getting with uh, Colin Klein and getting with Nick Oss and Skylar Thompson and learning, learning the offense so that when he did go home during our, our COVID break, he had his iPad, he had all the notes, he had everything he needed so that he could uh, work, work on it himself, himself. He could go on to the Zoom meetings that he had with Coach Klein. So, well, without question, it helped him a bunch uh, being an early enrollee. Kels? Um, I don't know how closely you've studied TCU yet, but how big of a difference was it for them in your mind to get Max Duggan back at quarterback last week? Uh, I think it was a big deal. Uh, he, I think he had a breakout game against us last year. I'm not sure. we were. I think it was his first start last year or, or first significant time. And I thought he played really well against us last year. And then uh, just watching him operate against uh, uh, Texas in, in particular, uh, I, I'm very impressed with him. He's a uh, really good football player. He's got a really good arm. He runs exceptionally well. And, and he's a very physical, tough kid. So I, I'm a big fan of his. He's a, he's a terrific player. And how, how do you think the team has handled being uh, in first place in the Big 12 standings right now? Is that – uh, motivator, uh, distractor, anything like that? Uh, we've played two games, so I don't even know what the standings are. I know we've won both of them, so we can't be in last. But uh, I, I don't think anybody, I, I, I don't think anybody pays attention. We've played two games in this league, and it's a great league, and um, it's never been brought up. So I would appreciate if we didn't bring it up to the guys. <laughs> John. Yeah, Chris, with the, the contract extension yesterday, just what does it mean to you to get that kind of a commitment from K-State just 16 games into your career? 
Well, I'm so thankful for uh, President Myers and, and for Gene Taylor um, in believing in what we are doing. And I keep saying we, I, I'm, I'm in this position because of what our players uh, have done, because of what our coaches have done, because of what our, our administration, and our support staff. Uh, it's a collective effort um, by everybody. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm thankful. My family and I love it here in Manhattan. We love the people we work with and work for. Um, but it, it, the credit needs to really go to the players and the assistant coaches for, for giving us an opportunity to, to lay, lay the foundation and continue what we want to do on top of the great things that, uh, that coach did here. You get any kind of chance to, to celebrate when that gets finalized, happens in season? No, no, you, you don't. You, there's every day such a, such a grind, which is fun. And uh, I told the guys after the game that we're going to grind out wins, but, uh, there's not a group in America I'd rather grind with than our football team because they, they, they know it. They love to grind. Appreciate it, Chris. Beth. Fitz. Uh, Coach, looking at um, a TCU's defense, they were really physical. They've always been physical, but they were physical and uh, with Texas quite a bit. What are your thoughts on how uh, Gary Patterson's defense depends? Well, all you do is mention the name Gary Patterson in defense, and you know it's going to be a terrific defense. Um, he's one of the best in the country and always has been. And um, they play really fast. Uh, they don't read and react. They're penetrating. They're upfield. They're, they're going to pressure you. They're going to, they're going to play man coverage. They're going to um, not let you get off, get off the line of scrimmage. They're going to hit you. They're, they're, they're uh, a really good defense that I know that Gary is probably – frustrated like I am as a defensive coach when you give up some explosive plays because that's the thing that you try to prevent is the explosive play uh, and um, you know that's that's going to be the key to the game um, which offense can get the explosive play because uh, I think both defenses are are, are good um, and, and at times exceptional and you just have to prevent that explosive play and then the turnover margin. In preparing a true freshman quarterback for a sophisticated defense like Patterson uses, uh, are you trying to balance having him ready without overwhelming him? Yeah, and, and we don't know if it's going to be Will. It's still a good yeah. chance it's going to be Skyler. So we're going to give them both the opportunity and just give them both enough plays. But like I said, I think when it first started, we wouldn't change the offense based on if it's Nick Oss could see some time. We won't mm -hmm. change it if Nick's playing or if Will's playing or if Skyler's playing. Um, it's just getting the pictures and the looks to those, to those three guys to make sure that they understand, okay, this is a pressure look. This is a coverage look. This is a rolled coverage. What is this picture? And so uh, that's the challenge uh, for Coach Klein, Coach Mess. But uh, um, I, I think those, the players are ready for the challenge as far as those quarterbacks. They, they spend an awful lot of time watching film with each other and, and picking each other's brains. Thank you. You bet. David. Hey, Chris, uh, just going back to your contract real quick. Um, I know you don't really get to pick when these things happen, and uh, I'm sure <laughs> you're, you're delighted to sign it. But um, I know given your sensitivity to – everything going on in the world right now and, and taking a pay cut yourself earlier this year. Were you concerned at all about the optics of it and, um, and kind of the, the challenge that the university is going through financially right now? Absolutely. And I know that we were working on this contract in January and February, I believe. And, and um, it was close to being done in February um, or right before the pandemic. I know uh, pretty much a lot of it was done at that time. And then, Obviously, when the pandemic hit, um, then we kind of stopped everything. But then when we started playing football um, here, I, I know that it kind of started back up um, with uh, Kansas State and, and representation that I have. And, um, and, and it really, for me, it starts in 2021. We're we still having our, our uh, reduction of pay in, in uh, this fiscal year. And, um, you know, the timing is is – not good all the time and there's never a good time, but uh, I just appreciate um, uh, the faith and Gene Taylor has in me and the president Myers has. And, and there's also a big piece to this in recruiting. And that's, that's something that I know um, from a recruiting, not only the players that aren't here, but the players that are here uh, that they know that there's a commitment to our staff uh, for the long haul and for the future. Thanks.
Kels? I feel like we've asked this every week, but now that you've had him for three whole games, how much of an impact has uh, Briley Moore and his pass catching ability added to the offense? It's fun to watch. You know, he's uh, – nothing surprises me that Briley Moore does at all, other than when he got caught going into the end zone. That's one thing I did get on him a little bit for. But uh, nothing surprises me. The kid's so talented, and uh, he works so hard, and he's got the right – attitude and the mindset. The thing that has impressed me the most with Briley uh, coming into a new situation is his leadership and how he has um, become a big voice on the football team, not only with the young guys, but the guys that have been here for four and five years. And that's sometimes a hard thing to, to navigate through and you don't want to step on people's toes and stuff. Um, but uh, he is without question one of our one of our leaders, uh, not just on the offense, but the entire football team. And it's because of how he plays and how he conducts himself off the field. We'll do these last two hands raised, starting with Michael. Yeah, coach, what went into your thought process on the fake field goal the last game? A couple things. Uh, we saw a look that we thought we could get it. And we've been practicing it for a while. And it was there. And I thought Jack did a phenomenal job of hitting it. And we fell off a block or Jack goes into the end zone and scores. So the execution part of it uh, was great. We missed one block and actually we had him blocked and the kid fell off and made a good play on it or Jack walks into the end zone. It was also against the wind. And so uh, even though I have so much confidence in, in Blake, um, I thought it was the right time. And uh, I know Texas Tech brought pressure all the time with their kicks. And I and Coach Riley, who runs that unit, and I both thought, hey, let's if we're going to do this, let's do it early in the game and maybe try to uh, ease some of that pressure. Thank you. You bet. Last one here, Ryan Black. Hey, uh, Chris, on, on the teleconference yesterday, I, I, I noticed someone asked you about how many – uh, punch you guys blocked at North Dakota State and you mentioned that you know you returned a lot of them because your scheme was more geared toward getting the ball in a playmaker's hands and letting them do something so how do you balance that between when do we want to gear our scheme more toward returning it as opposed to going for the blocks like you guys have got in the first three games well you, you, we have a return set up off of every block as well just simply because if you're bringing everybody they've got to stay in there and protect longer and then we'd fall back out and and, and, and have a return whether it's to the left side, middle or right side. So it's, it's always a part of it. Um, but I always think, and I, I think I visited about this yesterday, you have one chance to block a kick and then usually it gets corrected. So you want to try to do that early. And if you've, if you've noticed, we try to set the return up sometimes after that block, we don't come after it two times in a row. Typically we might, if we feel that the, at the, the error hasn't been corrected. Uh, we also have a really good returner in Phillip Brooks and, you know, it's no different than if you can run the football, you have a better chance with play action. If you can block a punch, you have a better chance to return one because people have to stay in there to protect longer. So for us, it's a great sign. I, I'm more excited about the fact that three different players have blocked a kick because they were calling out, uh, Texas Tech was calling out where A.J. was at. And A.J. was the guy that blocked it against Oklahoma. Well, then Seth became the guy that came free. And we always tell our guys, you don't know – when you're going to be the guy, you don't know when you're going to have that one chance. Uh, but if you don't get it, they're probably going to correct their air. And uh, Seth did a great job. I and mean, he was blocked, but he refused to be blocked and got around the the shield and made the made the made the play. So um, you know, moving forward, we're always going to try to have a block in. We're always going to try to have a return in. But sometimes your block looks help your return more, just because they have to protect longer.